by that time I had already come out. So if I was going to come out as a rapper and do this for real, I was really going to be me. I didn't want to hide anything. I didn't want to try to be somebody that I wasn't. Pedro, independent recording artist and producer with Amica Records, and you're watching Hashtag Verse TV. And make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel because we're going to be here all week. You know we're going to be living la vida. No, sir. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. It's your girl, Yuri G, with all the tea on Verse TV. And I'm here with your boy, Pedro. P Pedro, say something to the people. What's good? It's your boy, Pedro. No, sir. Living la vida. No, sir. All right, y'all. So this is an opportunity for you all to get to know Pedro. For those of you all who already know him, to get to know him a little better. And for anybody new tuning in, for you to get to know him, period. So I'm going to go ahead and let y'all know he is a very, very sexy, very <laughs> well-spoken, creative, and um, fun. He seems very fun. I appreciate that. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is an opportunity for y'all to get to know him. Um, and for our audience who may not know you yet, where are you from? I'm originally from the Bronx. I was born in the Bronx. I moved to Queens and Jamaica, Queens when I was nine, and then to Far Rockaway when I was 11. So from there, I just was like raised in Far Rockaway. Those was like my teenage years. That's where I was brought up. But all around New York, just New York. Okay. Yeah, I lived in New York for like three years. Um, when I first moved to New York, I was in 115th and St. Nick, then moved to Libby okay. Center in Bronx. And okay. then I was over there off of Green and um, Casiasco in Brooklyn for a while. Okay, okay. That's crazy out there, you out there. That's just a festo. So, um, how did, um, has that influenced your work? How has that influenced your work? Well, being like, Born in the Bronx, just like in like the era that I came up in in the 90s, I was surrounded by music and hip hop and dancing. And like, just I grew up with, like, with my mom, and she was a single mother, so she was just always playing music and just dancing around with her friends and stuff like that. So I just picked it up from there and just like had a love for it ever since. So, how long have you been doing rapping? Uh, well, okay, so. I'm going to say I wrote my first song at 11 years old, mm -hmm. um, but like as far as like, so from 11, I was just like writing, 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 trying to like make connections with people, other people that I was just like coming across online and things like that throughout my whole teenage years and everything. And then three years ago is when I started really pursuing it. That's when I first got into the recording studio and I started to put out music on like uh, big platforms. So how long have you been performing? So yeah, so it was um when I started to put out the music is when I been started to um like hit stages and do shows like in Tampa, Miami. Um, so it's been about three years as well, almost almost three. It's gonna be three years, I think, in like a month. So for someone who would like to, you know, that makes music but hasn't had the opportunity to put a live performance together. What steps would you tell them to um, to go into getting on a stage for people? It's a little bit, it's, it's difficult. I mean, like, thank God for the internet nowadays. So you got, like, the, the opportunity to, like, just go online and look up something that you want to do. But I would say it's best to start with open mics. Um, those are free opportunities most of the time. People are there to listen, so they're going to give you an open ear. And then they're just going to shut you out. So it gets your feet wet and gets you comfortable. Okay. So who would you say is your target audience for your music? My target audience? Um, for a while I was struggling with that because I just like make music from the heart, so I kind of just go how I feel. But my target audience, now that I've actually been digging more into my own original music and more of my feelings, is it goes back to the LGBT 
Q community. So honestly, that's the that's the supporters that I really am looking for to have my back. It's not it's not really anything outside of that because I don't do it for money. I don't do it for anything else. I just want people to understand my story and our story and where we come from and to support people like us. Okay, so what inspired you to enter the music industry as an openly gay rapper with bars? <laughs> well, um, when I was younger, when I first picked up the pen, um, I had a lot of trouble expressing myself because I wasn't straight. I was I knew from back then that that age, that young that I was into um, other men. So I couldn't really write up from a place of that that feeling. So when I finally decided to take rapping serious, by that time I had already come out. So if I was going to come out as a rapper and do this for real, I was really going to be me. I didn't want to hide anything. I didn't want to try to be somebody that I wasn't. So that's what made me want to do it. And then when I started to get a confirmation that I was actually good like from other people and stuff like that, it made me really want to go harder and show people that we don't have to be discounted just because we are homosexual. Okay, so from where did the choice for the stage name Pedro Losa come? <laughs> well, um, my real name is Peter. That's what that's my, my actual name, but I'm black Honduran, so Pedro is just the translation in Spanish, so it's just a cool little twist on it. And then Losa, that like Pedro just wasn't enough <laughs> as a rap name. I just had to, it had to make it cool, so Losa I just came up with because it kind of like is. What I would call myself if I was a girl, like kind of like expresses the feminine side of me, being like a homosexual rapper and like also like describes my life, which is like a fucking mess. So. <laughs> okay. So, on the jam, my team, you say if my voice on the beat, I probably produce the rock record. Would you say that you produce most of your tracks? Yeah, actually, um. Uh, all of the original tracks that I put out, I produced myself. Um, I didn't know anything about a producer, so I just started making good myself to how I felt about the music. Okay, so your tracks are excellent. What do you use to produce your track? And do you use X or do you um, hop on a, you know, physics keyboard? Well, um... Making my beats, I use GarageBand. That's how I make all of my beats um, that I've made so far. I'd like to get into other like um, other software programs, but GarageBand is just the easiest. Is what I kind of like learned in school, so it's what I picked up when I decided to take music serious. So, what production apps do you prefer, and do you produce for any other artists? Um, production apps that I prefer, I prefer GarageBand. Um, I also use uh, a WavePad, which is an NCA download um, that you can get online. Um, and I haven't produced for any other artists yet, um, just because producing is not really a thing or like a title that I like to give myself because I feel like I make the beats because I have to get the songs out. But um, yeah, I, I'm not opposed to it. I'll definitely be down to do it. Okay. Tell me about your album. Um, 2020 MPH and the intro. All right, so um, I want to start with the intro, and um, it's that intro is like a compilation of songs that I created as I was kind of like getting started with um, with making music and uh, distributing music. Uh, so like it started from the song Anything that I made like in June 2017 and then after that I did Mr. Perfect and then after that I did Get Into It and then I just was in the same time doing like freestyles and trying to put like a little mixtape together in the meantime so I was it just was like a bunch of studio sessions and that's what I came from and it just was like a feeling of old songs that I had back when I was 11 years old all the way up, up, up until now like fresh songs that I, I, I wrote just recently it's all a compilation of that, and I feel like it's a perfect name to kind of like catch that story. The intro is the introduction to what um, started in the music industry. And as far as 2020 miles per hour, pay attention to the titles of the tracks 
one is M, one is P, one is H. And 2020 is what this year is. And I wanted to let my sonas know that that's the type of speed we're on right now. We're going, we're not stopping. And we're going. Okay. So what is the most difficult part of your work in the music industry? And what is the most enjoyable part of your work in the music industry? most difficult part um, I don't really think any of it is necessarily difficult um, as far as like making music goes the hardest part would probably be like getting started to be honest like you just gotta get started once you get a start get that thought get that start and just build off of that you don't have to finish it you just have to, to start it then when you finish it you can say you're done you know what I'm saying um, but you also asked me the most enjoyable part mm -hmm. and um that literally is when people literally just tell me that they like a song it could just be one song or if they like something like if they like an original song that's that's what gives me the most joy because the freestyles those are cool and i appreciate that but i just write, write those just for fun like but when i when somebody likes an original piece of mine it's like them telling me just because that they just like me All right. So you seamlessly infuse some of your songs with Spanish. In what languages are you fluent? Yeah, um, I do throw some Spanish off my songs. Uh, it's fun. But um, I don't know if I'm really like fluent. I'll be talking to people in Spanish all the time, though. But that's really the only two languages, like English, of course, and Spanish I speak. Um, hood. <laughs> but like... Um, that's it. That's it. Okay. <laughs> you can find me on Instagram at this is Pedro Losa. Also on YouTube, Pedro Losa. Um, on SoundCloud, Pedro Losa Music. Um, all that good stuff. Download the intro 2020 miles per hour. All that good stuff on all your favorite streaming sites and everything.